Thanks, Hugh. You're watching Southeast Today, our top story tonight. We've discovered that up to 70% of defibrillators in the community are unusable. The adopted mother of a boy abused by his birth parents calls for a child cruelty register. Hello, good evening. When grandfather David Cooper collapsed while taking part in the London to Brighton bike ride, passers-by phoned 999 for an ambulance, but also to get a code to unlock a nearby community defibrillator. But because the devices have to be re-registered every few months, the call handlers couldn't find it on their system to provide that code to unlock it. In fact, the British Heart Foundation estimates that up to 70% of community defibrillators across the southeast do not show up on the 999 database potentially putting lives at risk listen to adam has more okay. so press the button Don't touch sir. the patient okay go away press the button shock delivered when someone's heart stops a defibrillator can be the difference between life and death steve morris knows exactly how important they are Eight years ago, Jim Staff in East Grinstead used one when he had a heart attack on a treadmill. It's really emotional for me that someone, someone saved my life and, and, and a few months ago I actually saved someone else's life um, outside my, my flat, which that really did tip me over in emotions. But the BBC has discovered that tens of thousands of public defibrillators can't always be used if they're not on the national database used by the emergency services. Defibrillators like this one are locked for security, but the instructions on the front clearly say that if you're speaking to a 999 operator, they can give you the access code, but only if the defibrillator has been properly registered. The British Heart Foundation, which manages the database, says more than half of community defibrillators are not registered. That means the ambulance service can't provide access codes to them. And even once a defibrillator is registered, its profile has to be updated every three months. Otherwise, its registration lapses. I just think there should be a concerted campaign just to involve the public, if, if necessary, to make sure these defibrillators get on the system. Because as we know, they just they save a life. When 69-year-old David Cooper collapsed in Smallfield during the London to Brighton bike ride on Sunday, South East Coast Ambulance Service say the 999 call taker wasn't able to direct anyone to the nearest defibrillators as they weren't showing as available. This is the database, defibfinder.uk. For example, in nearby Lingfield, there are a number of defibrillators showing up on the map. Most appear as available but some are showing as not available now. Without their registration, ambulance services face a significant challenge in locating the nearest defibrillator for bystanders to use um, and access during emergency situations. This obviously has a massive consequence um, in the survival rate of patients. The British Heart Foundation says it's working harder to promote registration through its online portal known as The Circuit, which puts a defibrillator on the map. We appreciate that it's a new system for many people and that like 70,000 have been registered so far. We're aiming to get to 100,000 by the end of the year and then we're still going to keep going. So anyone out there who's got a defibrillator and you haven't registered it yet or you haven't updated your record, you know, please log on to the circuit and help us to provide the ambulance services with the information. A few minutes of form filling that could make all the difference when every second counts. Lucinda Adam reporting. The search has been called off for a highly respected and much-loved firefighter who went missing while swimming the channel for charity. Ian Hughes from Dudley in the West Midlands was reported missing in French waters yesterday afternoon, but after an extensive search using helicopters and boats, no trace of the 42-year-old could be found. His colleagues say they are devastated. There are calls tonight for a child cruelty register for people who have harmed children from the adopted mother of a boy who was abused by his birth parents. Tony Hudgel had to have both of his legs amputated after they were fractured as a baby. His parents were sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2018. His adopted mum Paula is concerned his birth father Tony Smith will harm a child again after his release and is calling for those convicted of child-related abuse to be kept on a lifelong register. He shouldn't be released, but we know that come 2027, no matter what happens, he will be released and he will be on our streets. 
um, and unsupervised as well, um, and which means he can enter into another relationship. Um, he could go on to have more children, he could work with children, he could be around children, and yet within that report, it shows how much of a risk he is to children. A stalker who drove from Devon to a hotel near Crawley to slash a woman's car tyres has been sentenced to 14 months in jail. Rhys Chipperfield also poured red paint over the 28-year-old woman's car and left a threatening note on the windscreen. He'd had a working relationship with her but had become infatuated. A special flag has been raised to mark 75 years since the first members of the Windrush generation arrived in Britain. The flag was raised today over County Hall in Maidstone to celebrate the contribution of those who arrived from the Caribbean in Kent. Half a million people subsequently made the trip between 1948 and 1971, invited to help rebuild Britain after the Second World War. Time now for a look at the South East weather. Here's John Hammond. Hi there, we're pretty much set fair as we head towards the weekend. It'll be turning very humid as well. Not too muggy tonight. Under clear skies, temperatures dipping down as low as 12 or 13 degrees. There could be a little bit of dawn fog around. For most, that will quickly disperse. There's a chance of some sea mist just lapping onto some southern coastal areas, but most of us actually having a belter of a day. Warm and sunny, temperatures up into the mid, possibly high 20s, fairly light winds. Humidity will increase as we hit the weekend. You'll notice that on Saturday, quite a muggy feel, increasing chance of some of that sea mist onto the southern coast, but uh, high 20s, nudging 30 degrees possibly in one or two places inland. Sunday, another very warm and sunny day, and then it turns more unsettled next week. That is it from me and the rest of the late team. Kirstine O'Donnell is back in the morning. Good night. <laughs>